こんにちは。スマイル日本語アカデミーのゆうこ先生です。今日のレッスンは助詞についてです。Today's lesson is about particles. I know many learners get confused about Japanese particles. So in today's lesson, I want to talk about particles. Please know that the ones that I'm going to cover in this lesson are not all the particles that we have in Japanese. The function I explain for each particle here is not the only function for that particle either. One single particle can have multiple functions and it's impossible for me to cover everything in one lesson. So I'm going to teach you only the basic ones today, okay? People struggle with Japanese particles in the same way as we, Japanese people, struggle with English prepositions. In English, one preposition has multiple functions too. The same preposition can mark a time expression like this or a place like this. And at other times, different prepositions mark time expressions and places like this. They are so confusing to us Japanese, so I completely understand why people get confused about Japanese particles too. Many students ask me how they can master particles quickly, but to be honest, there is no quick and easy way. The only way to get the hang of particles is to use them over and over in your own sentences and then learn from the mistakes so that your brain stores enough data to know which one to use. For instance, I still don't know exactly why I cannot say at Sunday or in home. I don't know the reason. I just know that's not the way it is in English because I have used these prepositions enough in my sentences and now saying at Sunday or in home does not sound right to me, which means my brain has stored enough data about these prepositions. But I know it's going to be a long way to reach that point, so today I'm going to cover the basic particles that people often get confused at the beginning level. They are o, ga, to, ya, ka, de, and two kinds of ni. Okay, let's begin. では始めましょう。Today I'm going to explain these particles for these functions. The particle を marks a direct object. が marks things you like, subject of existence, or a specific topic within the main topic of the sentence. These three particles mark places. で marks a place of action. This に marks a destination and This ni marks a place of existence. These three particles connect nouns. To is used when you say A and B. Ya is to say A and B, for example. Ka is to say A or B. For the particle to, ya, ka, You can watch this lesson to learn more. I'll leave the link to the lesson in the description box below. Okay, let me start with these three particles that mark places first. De for a place of action, ni for a destination, and another ni for a place of existence. I'm going to use Kyoto as an example place, okay? When you are not sure if you should mark a place with de or ni, what you have to look at is not the place, which is Kyoto in this case. You have to look at the ending of the sentence. Why? Because the verb at the end of the sentence decides the function of the place in that particular sentence. Take a look at the first sentence. It has 行きました went, right? 
That means Kyoto in that sentence is a destination, as in I went to Kyoto. So you have to mark it with the pariko ni. You can also mark it with the pariko e. It is another destination marker. But ni is more conversational and preferred in spoken language, so I'm going to stick with ni in this lesson, okay? Now take a look at the second sentence. You have the verb tabemashita, eight, which means the place. Kyoto in this sentence is a place of action. You did the action of eating in Kyoto, so you have to mark it with the pariko de. What did you eat in Kyoto, by the way? You ate sushi, right? So this sentence means I ate sushi in Kyoto. Kyoto de sushi o tabemashita. In the third sentence, you have the verb arimas exist. And here, wa exist is marked by the pariko ga, which is otera, a temple. So in this sentence, the place Kyoto is the place of existence where a temple or temples exist. That's why you have to mark it with the pariko ni. Kyoto ni otera ga arimasu. Temples exist in Kyoto, meaning there are temples in Kyoto. I hope you now see the difference between these three particles to mark a place, but please be careful not to misunderstand. When you have a place in your sentence like this, it doesn't mean that you always have to use one of these three particles to mark it. Again, it all depends on what you have at the end of the sentence. For instance, let's say you still have Kyoto in your sentence, but now you say Suki desu at the end. So here, Kyoto is a place that you like. It's not a place of action, destination, or a place of existence. So you cannot use pariko de or ni here. When you like something, you have to use the pariko ga to mark it. So here you have to say Kyoto ga suki desu. I like Kyoto. Kyoto ga suki desu. Again, what matters is the end of the sentence. As you see here, if you have ikimashita, Kyoto is the destination. But when you have suki desu, Kyoto is what you like. Okay, let's move on to the next group. The pariko to ya ka that connect nouns. As I said, you can learn about these three particles in more detail in this lesson, but the bottom line is they connect only nouns. These three particles to ya ka do not connect verbs, adjectives, or sentences. Please remember this, okay? For example, you cannot use the pariko to to connect two actions like wake up and exercise, as in, I wake up at six o'clock and exercise. We don't use particles to connect actions. We do something completely different in Japanese, but I'm not going to cover that in this lesson since it's going to be too much information, okay? Please watch this lesson to learn how to connect actions and this lesson to learn how to connect adjectives in Japanese. Okay, let's get back to the particles. To, ya, ka. It's perfectly fine to use these particles to connect two place names like this Kyoto and Osaka. So the first one, Kyoto to Osaka means Kyoto and Osaka. The second one, Kyoto ya Osaka means Kyoto and Osaka, for example. And the third one, 
Kyoto ka Osaka means Kyoto or Osaka. Let's add the same endings to these three sentences. Ikitai desu. Want to go. What particles would you add here? You can figure this one out, right? The answer is ni, the destination marker, because you have want to go in the sentence. So you have to say, I want to go to Kyoto and Osaka by marking these pairs with the destination marker ni. Now these sentences are complete. The first sentence means, I want to go to Kyoto and Osaka. The second one means, I want to go to Kyoto and Osaka, for example. The third one means, I want to go to Kyoto or Osaka. Okay, now let's move on to the next particle. The particle ga. As we discussed earlier, ga marks things that you like, as in, Kyoto ga suki desu. I like Kyoto. And of course, that's not the only function of this particle. ga has so many different functions, but today I'm going to cover three of them, okay? ga also marks a specific topic within the main topic of the sentence like this. Here, the main topic is Japan, Nihon, and that's why it's marked by the topic marker wa. And the Kyoto is the specific topic inside the main topic, Japan, here. So this sentence means, as for Japan, Kyoto is famous. Nihon wa Kyoto ga yume desu. Nihon wa Kyoto ga yume desu. You can also say something like this by changing the specific topic about Japan. Nihon wa hito ga shinsetsu desu. Nihon wa hito ga shinsetsu desu. As for Japan, people are kind. Or, as for Japan, the cities or towns are clean. Nihon wa machi ga kirei desu. Nihon wa machi ga kirei desu. Like this, the particle ga can mark a specific topic related to the main topic of the sentence. And the one more function of the particle ga that I want to cover in this lesson is this. Ga also marks the subject of existence like this. In Japan, Kyoto exists, meaning there is Kyoto in Japan. Nihon ni Kyoto ga arimasu. Nihon ni Kyoto ga arimasu. If you want to say there are temples in Kyoto as we did earlier, you can go like this, right? Kyoto ni otera ga arimasu. Kyoto ni otera ga arimasu. If you are not familiar with how to express the existence of things or people in Japanese, please watch this lesson. I'll leave the link to the lesson in the show more section below. Okay, let's cover one last particle in today's lesson. The particle o. This particle marks a direct object in the sentence. So you have to use the particle o to mark things that you eat, drink, watch, study, create, wash, and so on. But of course, you will never eat Kyoto or drink Kyoto, right? So you may think there is no case that we use the particle o to mark a place name like Kyoto. But there is actually. When you treat Kyoto as a place that somebody knows, for instance, then you have to mark it with the particle o. So when you ask a question, do you know Kyoto? 
you have to go like this. 京都を知っていますか京都を知っていますか Or if the city of Kyoto is something that you have been studying about or researching, then again, you have to mark it with the particle o as the direct object of your study like this. 京都を研究しています。京都を研究しています。So now, as you know, it's completely possible to mark this one word, Kyoto, with all of these particles, depending on the context of the sentence. I'm going to repeat myself one more time, okay? What matters is not the word itself, but the predicate at the end of the sentence. You have to pay attention to the context of the sentence to choose the correct particle for each word in the sentence. I hope this lesson helped you to better understand how particles work in Japanese. Join my online courses to access comprehensive Japanese lessons like this one anytime you want. The courses are all self-paced and there is no time limit to complete each course. You can learn Japanese at your own pace with my support. The best price to get all the grammar courses from Japanese 1 to 5 is to sign up for the complete package. Find all the information including the lesson list for each course in the show more section below. In the next lesson, I'm going to give you some exercises on particles. I want to see how well you can use particles now after this lesson. If the exercise is already published by the time you're watching this video, you should find the link in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the exercise next week. ではまた次のレッスンで会いましょう。